In this video, I'll be solving problem 10.7 from Taylor's Classical Mechanics. The problem reads, a rounded cone is made by cutting out of a uniform sphere of radius r the volume with theta is less than or equal to theta naught, where theta is the usual angle measured from the polar axis, and theta naught is a constant between 0 and pi. Um, as I've drawn here, part A asks us to describe this cone and use the result of problem 10.4 to find its volume. And the result of problem 10.4 is right there. It's just the integral of a function of position over a volume written in spherical coordinates. We're just finding its volume, so we'll just be integrating dv over the volume. So I'll just copy this out, and then we'll find the limits of integration. There is no function of position in this case because we're just finding the volume. So um, since it's a cone, it's round, the limits of integration in phi are 0 to 2 pi all the way around. In theta, we've just been told that it spans from 0 to theta naught, whatever that is. And in r, we're just integrating from 0 to r, the radius of the sphere that it's been cut out of. So that is equal to uh, bring out the 2 pi. Let's do the integration for r. So the integral of r squared is r cubed over 3. So that'll be capital R cubed over 3. And then we're just integrating in theta, sine theta d theta. So the integral of sine is negative cosine at 2 pi r cubed over 3, negative cosine of theta, 0 to theta naught. So that'll be 2 thirds i r cubed, 1 minus cosine theta naught. Part B of the question asks us to find the cone's center of mass and comment on our results for the cases that theta naught equals pi and theta naught approaches zero. So the center of mass of the cone, um, we can see by inspection, not necessarily in my drawing, but by picturing a cone centered about the z axis that um, the symmetry in the x and y directions means that the center of mass in x equals 0 and the center of mass in y equals 0. So we'll just do the center of mass in z as in the previous two problems. So the center of mass in z will be equal to the density over the mass. And again, the density is uniform. Um, it'll be equal to the mass over volume when we plug it in. And then we'll have the integral again from 0 to r, r squared dr, 0 to theta naught sine theta d theta, and then from 0 to 2 pi d phi, and then the function of position, which in this case is z, which is equal to r cosine theta. So as in the previous problems, pulling out the 2 pi Let's make sure we combine these r's, so that's r cubed integrated, we'll have r to the fourth over 4, and then we have an integral from 0 to theta naught of, um, again, sine theta, cosine theta, d theta, which we solved in the previous problem by substitution, that is going to be equal to, um, let me just write this out, it's equal to sine squared theta over 2. In this case, it's sine squared theta of theta naught minus sine squared theta of zero, which is zero. So we'll just change this to a theta naught. And then let's plug in the value for rho, which we found was two thirds pi r cubed times one minus cosine theta naught. So we'll have m over v. That's rho times 2 pi r to the fourth over 4m times 2. And then up here we've got the sine squared theta naught. So canceling gives us 3 eighths r sine squared theta naught over 1 minus cosine theta naught which the book expresses as 3 sixteenths r times 1 minus cosine 2 theta naught over 
1 minus cosine theta naught, which is the same using the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 trigonometric identity. So now we'll do part B, or the rest of part B. Comment on our results for the cases that theta naught equals pi and for the case that theta naught is approaching 0. If theta naught equals pi, we will have that z equals and let's use the second, or whatever, let's use the first version. 3 eighths r sine squared pi is 0. Oh, we're done. Center of mass would equal 0. Now, does that make sense? Let's draw the xz plane. If our theta angle is pi, that means that our cone actually extends all the way to the negative z-axis and is a sphere. Now, what's the center of mass of a sphere centered at the origin? Zero. Um, the other part asks us to consider theta naught approaching zero. So in this case, we'll be taking the limit as theta naught approaches zero of three sixteenths, and let's use Taylor's version for this. Three sixteenths are 1 minus cosine 2 theta naught over 1 minus cosine theta naught. If theta naught is 0, um, obviously we'll have a limit of the form 0 over 0, so we'll use L'Hopital's rule. Let's pull out the constants. Limit as theta naught approaches 0, and this is the derivative with respect to theta naught, so um, the numerator will be the derivative of negative cosine, which is sine. 2 theta naught times 2 in the denominator, it'll be sine theta naught. Now those are both 0 at 0. So we'll take the second derivative which will be cosine 2 theta naught times 4 over cosine of theta naught and at 0, that equals 3 sixteenths r times 4 over 1. So actually, we will equal 12 sixteenths or 3 quarters r.